Good afternoon, it's that bloke on a motorbike and welcome to another one of the videos in the short series of Ride the Tips videos Today I thought I'd look at cornering it's one of the most pleasurable things you can do on a bike uh, and one of the reasons why a lot of people actually ride So what I'm going to do is split this down into different sections I'm going to have a look at observations so what we're looking at, why we're we looking, what's it telling us. Then we're going to have a look at position for the bend to get your bike in the best position to deal with the hazard, which it actually is a hazard, is the bend. Uh, and then after that, we're going to have a look at the actual control of the bike as we go through and negotiate the bends. So stay tuned. Now we'll have a look. So one of the things to remember about a bend, it's not just a bend in the road, it's anywhere where your bike is not upright, where it's going round a curve in other words. And we can use the same principles. So we can use those coming into this roundabout. And it's a hazard. So if we go back to the fundamentals video and think about what a hazard is and what makes a hazard, it says that it's made up of Physical features, so where's the road going, other vehicle and traffic movements, and weather conditions. And what we need to run as well is that what ifs. If I do that, what is he going to do? And if he does something, what am I going to do? So on a bend in particular like that, if that car had to come across my side of the road, what are my options? I don't want to be committing 100% all the time to it. Okay, so if a bend's a hazard then, we're thinking of it slightly differently now. It's not a case of, oh, that looks brilliant. I can knee down it, I can get round as fast as I can. Because with any hazard, there's an overriding fundamental thing you've got to do with them. You must always be able to stop in the distance you can see to be clear and on your own side of the road, preferably. Now, the thing with that is, what can you see to be clear? So over those bends that we've just gone past there, just gone through, we could see across the bend. So I could see there wasn't any traffic, there wasn't any traffic movements, and we got good weather. What I couldn't see is where is my front wheel going to go? So I've got to be thinking all the time, what if there's something on the road? What am I going to do? And we use the system going into a bend as well because it's any hazard we'd use it for so basically what I'm thinking now is do I need to take in information from around me yes I do that vehicle's slowing what's behind me he's going to let somebody out I think here so we just hold it back yeah there we go they've come out do I need to give any information out so I did do I need to signal well yes I did not in the conventional way of an indicator but I did feather my brake just to tell the person behind me that I was stopping. Do I need to change position? Yes, so I take position. Speed, that was okay. Gear, I've got the right one. What I'm moving offline, so do I need a shoulder check? No. So we've just used the bits of the system that we actually need. So coming into this, mirror check. One vehicle behind, I've got a good braking distance, I've got good gear changing position now over towards the left side to open up the bend still got good position on that vehicle mirror check and then i'm moving to an offside position so i've got a view down his right hand side and i'm also in his internal mirror and his driver's mirror so that's using the system so having a quick look at this one here we can see that we've got on the left hand side we've got the bend sign and then we've got road narrows we've also got the chevron board there and i'm looking as deep into that bend as i can to where the two points of the curb appear to meet now that's called the limit point or the vanishing point or the arrow head depending on how old you are and which book you read and basically that should always be moving away from you if it's stationary then you're going the maximum speed around that bend that you can. If it's coming towards you, the bend's tightening and you definitely need to get some speed off. Ideally, it should just be moving away from you 
nice and steadily the quicker it's moving away you can always think of that as the faster it moves away from you the safer the bend you might not be going around it quick but it's safer it might make it a little bit easier if we uh, have a look at that on a, a simple drawing so you can see there that we've got the road and it bends round to the right now as it bends round obviously we can see from the top there the two curbs but imagine we're looking at it from our point of view of coming into that particular bend it would look as though the two curbs meet so what you do is for the right hand bend you project the right hand curb straight forward and where it touches that is your vanishing point and that's what we need to keep a check on obviously if we we're going to go around to the left then it will be the left hand curb which moves across to touch the right hand curb so as we're approaching we're looking at these two points and we're waiting for them just to start to move away from us nice and gradual if they're gradually moving away from us then everything's nice and safe if they're coming towards us i would definitely need to get rid of some speed so as i start to go around this bend is moving away from me that vanishing point starts to move away and what i'm looking for is i call it the hidden curb so it's what the point where the curb is becomes visible in the direction that you're turning now that sounds a little bit convoluted but basically if you're going around a left hand bend it's when you can see the left hand curb on the exit if you're going around a right hand bend it's when you can see the right hand bend on the exit and that is the point at which we would start to commit away from the um we commit away from the, the turn itself and come back into a normal position or into a position which is best for whatever we've seen whatever constitutes another hazard so let's have a look and see how that works so as we're coming around there you can see where that car is disappearing now so look at the two curbs the station at the moment so I'm easing the speed it's moving away now now that's the point I'm watching hidden curb now that's when the acceleration comes in again so watch the point again two curbs are still together still forming a point I can see the curb now right so accelerate we've got an advance warning sign there for a bend to the left so this time we've got hazard as well there's a vehicle turning out and a vehicle turning right so look at the two points of the curb look at the left hand curb it's not there yet now it is so that's when we can hear the acceleration comes back in don't worry about the position at the minute we'll get to that so again as I go around here can't see that right hand curb it's behind the trees watch the right hand curb there it is power comes on same with this one here we're going over to the left got a warning sign so it's a tight one watch that curb watch it it's not there yet it's not there yet now it's there then we've got the one going to the right so it's a fairly open bend is this but watch the curb now i can see the exit so you see how the speed's now coming up watching the curb again on the right hand side there it's straight so taking position watch the one on the left now can't see the exit holding position and now look at that straight again so that's how we're using the observations of going around the bend one of the big problems you've got doing that is that you tend to watch what the road's doing and then you look at your speed you and realize that you're uh, a little bit north of what you should be doing okay so let's look at position now you can see if i stand near the white line here then you can see how far around the bend i can see where the two pieces of, of hedgerow meet now if i move to the center of the lane can you see how it's moved a bit more and if i move over to the left hand side it's moved around even further so from that we can deduce that if you've got 
for a right hand bend if you come over towards the left side then you're going to see further around the bend and for a left hand bend you go out towards the crown to see further round but we've got to take into account there what they can see can't see and what you could expect to happen so look at the road surface what does the road surface look like if it's bad cambered rutted muck sludge whatever on the road take a safer position use the vanishing point and as long as that's moving away from you you'll still be at a safe speed to go around that bend and it might mean that you sacrifice the bend for your safety so you sacrifice position for safety and you sacrifice speed for safety that's all you can go back you can have another go to it a different day but that's what we need to be doing okay so left hand position gives an open view mid position in your lane gives a more restricted view and the right hand position near the crown of the road will severely restrict your view on a right hand bend and on a left hand bend it's the opposite so for the left hand bend there we can see the two curbs meeting and I'm over towards the left side so we can see that the cur that the hedgerow is more or less meeting up or the road disappears where that gap is in the hedge on the just on the right hand side there if I come to the centre of the lane it's moved a little bit and if I come out towards the crown it's moved even further so let's have a look now and see how the position affects what we're doing so on this left hand bend I'm out towards the crown of the road we can see fairly well around that bend I'm going to hold position because it's still going round to the left now can you see it going round to the right so here I'll move across towards the left hand side holding that and then when I can see that offside kerb open then I'll move across towards the right when I see this kerb I'll move away and especially because we've got that traffic now see how I sacrifice to a mid position the same thing now as I go around here watching that car you see I sacrifice position there because they were cutting across definitely cut the corner off there if I'd have been in the offside position extended because it's a left hand bend I'd have stuck rigidly to it, I'd have put myself in a dangerous position then. So these bends are absolutely brilliant for, for watching what we're doing. So look at this, I'm going out towards the crown. We can see the two points moving away. I'm taking it steady so you can see it. Still moving, still moving, looking for the hidden kerb. There it is, back across. Holding position again, see how much room I get on that vehicle. And then using the exit of that bend to meet up with this one. Back over towards the left side to open it up a bit, being mindful of that junction. Okay, I'm deliberately going into the wrong position now. Look how tight that is and the bike wants to naturally drift out. So if I'm coming into this, I don't have the view around the bend. I'm deliberately going to go into wrong position just to see. Can you see how that cuts down? So any vehicle coming around that bend I'll be compromised on safety. Same as if I take this bend wrong now. Look at that. I don't have the same sort of view around the bend as I would do if I were further out. We got that large vehicle there, so staying over on the left, look how much room I've got on him. Whereas if it had been coming into that in the wrong position, it could have been a whole different ball game. Now look at that bend now, see where the white line tucks in on the right hand side? Dropping the speed down, it's not really moving too much yet. Wait until I see the hidden kerb, then I know I'm out of the bend. in position, see it's tightening, staying in position, there's no vehicles, wait while I see it, 
Look at it continuing round. And you can see that far one now is tightening. The two curbs are going together. Look at that. By getting in the correct position, I didn't know that were coming. So what we need to look at now is we need to look at how we physically control the bike as we go around a bend. Now yes we can lean it but there is a better way to do it and that's the black art of counter steering. A lot of people say that you push the bar, no you don't, you weight the bar. So we're using the, the physics of the machine that it doesn't want to stay in a straight line and if I put a little bit of weight on that left hand bar watch what happens to the bike so I'm going to put a little bit of weight on the left hand bar can you see it's going over towards the left and if I put a little bit of pressure on the right hand bar the bike goes over towards the right so what we can do is we can use that to dial in where we want it to turn the other thing is that if we just use lean handles alone you lean the bike so if I lean the bike over towards the left hand side my body's coming over then the bike follows to get it to come back up now I've got to climb up over the balance point of the bike to get it to come back whereas if I use counter steer what I can do now you can see my hands there if I press the left hand bar weight the left hand bar it goes right now if I press and weight the right hand bar it comes back up and goes over to the right and then I can bring it back up by putting weight on the left bar if you're going to practice this, please, 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 practice it while you stood still to get the fundamentals of it. It is weighting the bar. It is definitely not pushing the bar. Okay, so we can use that to initiate where we want to turn and then to come back up from the turn. So let's have a look at that going in a bit of a straight line. I'll just work while this traffic's going. Okay, so now it's clear. Let's put that into practice. So I'm going on here. And when I want to initiate a, the bike going to the left, all I'm going to do is weight the left bar, like that. Now if I wanted to initiate it going to the right, I'll weight the right bar, like that. So if I push the left, right, left, right, and all I'm doing is just weighting the bar. I'm not pushing, I'm just putting a little bit of pressure onto the bar. So if we look at that as we come into this bend here, so clear behind, we've got one vehicle coming into the bend, but it's not an issue for me. So I'll go around it steadily. All I'm going to do is pressure and just hold it with the throttle. And we're round. I didn't ask to lean. The bike did it for me. And this is the secret to smooth riding. Let the bike do as much of the work as you can. So coming into this bend here, what I'm going to do now is I'm very, very gently weighting the right hand bar. Look at that, my other hand is off altogether. So as I'm coming into there, I see press and we're straight into position. So I'm holding this position now, holding the crown as it comes in here. I'm going to ease over to the left bar and now as we go into this one I'm going to be watching for that hidden curb I've got a good position there bit of pressure, a bit of throttle brings me right into position on the next one just sacrifice for that vehicle so we've got that van coming towards me now so I can't get in position so I'll hold centre and then it's just a case of a little bit of left bar and the bike responds beautifully. Coming into the right hand bend, position to the left, right bar, bit of throttle to balance the bike, ease the pressure on the bar, more right pressure there, and then picking the speed up a little bit, I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of pressure, pressure left there, pressure right lifts it back up so again sacrificing position for the van I'm going to pressure on the left bar pressure on the left easing the pressure it comes back up now on the right I'm going to use pressure on the right bar there and then 
pressure left slight, pressure left, and then bring it back up with the pressure on the right bar. So it's not push, it's definitely not push, all it is is weighting the bar. So if you want to go to the right, weight on the right bar. If you want to go to the left, weight on the left bar. So a secret to smooth riding is to relax. If I go into this bend and go rigid on the controls, it drifts out and then as soon as I relax, it comes back away from the, the danger area. The other one is don't get target fixated. Look through the bend, look where you want to go, not where you think the bike will end up. So on that last little demo there, my eyes were all the way around the bend, so as soon as I relaxed, the bike would come back online. So with this one, I'm going to go in, I'm going rigid on the bars, it's not reacting, now I re release the grip on the bars and it comes back online. So coming into this, cross view, got one vehicle coming in from the right hand side, mirror checks are cleared, dropping the speed, easing it down, coming round, when I get the hidden kerb, there it is, I can put a little bit of power on. But look at the white marker boards there, it's not moving, it's going tucked in right on the left hand side. So speed's right down there, as I go around, wait for the brake, there it is, got the kerb, and then I can accelerate. So that's not the fastest way, and I've gone around that quite a few times with bikes overtaking me on the bend, but at least I knew I was safe. And to me, that is overriding. Let's have a look how we put it all together now then. So we can see in front we've got a chevron board looking across, there's one vehicle approaching from the right hand side, we're going to be there about the same time. So easing the speed down, gear is good, hidden curb brakes, using a bit of power to come out. So the road's going round to the left there, looking across the hedge, I can't see what's underneath the hedge. So I can't be confirming it's clear. There's the vehicle, cut in the corner, look at that. So I had to maintain position in the centre of the lane. So what you can see, what you can't see, what you can reasonably expect. What I could see was the vehicle coming towards me. I couldn't see the road surface, but I could expect that he were going to cut the corner, which is exactly what he did. If I hadn't put that into the plan, Again, we might have had a bit of a different result. Now, from the national speed limit sign, so I can start building the speed up. Advance warning sign of a road to the right, and a 40 mile an hour bend. There's an uh, information board direction sign there, so there's a junction off on the bend. Mirror check, I've got one vehicle, but it's a long way off. You can see the finger post now, so a mirror check again. Bit of a right count steer, move away from the junction, no opposing traffic. Over towards the left now for that opposing. Just maintaining the distance of these vehicles in front. I can't get an overtake at the moment, it's just not there, so I might as well sit where I am. Mirror check, one vehicle, so a van is still behind, it's a good distance behind. You can see there's a wagon just gone out of view coming towards me. We're going to be meeting on the exit to this bend, I would imagine. So to come round there, keeping away from the bend, he's not there yet. Where's he gone? There he is. So that was in my plan, all the way down there, sacrificing position. But you can't see, you can't see, you can reasonably expect. So there's another vehicle just going to enter this bend. It just turned off there, there's some more cars with the van. Over towards the left side, road's going round to the right. Road surface is good, so a little bit of right steering. Not right now, but one wagon approaching. So over towards the left side on the exit from the bend to give yourself some room. 
I, you obviously can't see me because the camera's on my helmet, but I'm not climbing all over the bike, I'm just using the counter steer and letting the bike roll underneath me. So mirror check, still same bit, we've got a house on the left, so moving out towards the right, in case somebody knows us out from the driveway. So going round to the left, so staying out to this crown position. See it now running round to the right ahead of me, so back over towards the left. Expecting another vehicle possibly coming round that bend towards me. It's clear, so I've got a mirror check of power. Got a sign there for wild animals, so I expect something coming out. Got another one for wild animals, so it must be a bit of a problem. Going into the left hand bend, when I see the left hand curve, bit of power, bit of speed. Watching the road surface, it's quite rutted, so very check, picking the best position I can on this road. Warning sign of a junction, so mirror checks. I'm going to move over towards the left side just in case somebody comes up to that junction. Then we've got a road going round to the right, uh, sorry, the left, so mirror check again. Same vehicle, it's got a little bit close to me now. So I'm going to call it quits for today. Hope you found it useful. Leave me a comment, let me know. If you're a subscriber, thank you very much. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please consider it. It does make a huge difference to the channel. Like it, share it, do what you want with it. If you're out on your bike, stay safe, keep the rubber side down, shiny side up. I'm off for a cup of coffee and a little bit of a bacon butty, I think. So I will see you out on the road. Stay safe, folks. Bye for now.